Session 3b The Zibalbe and Kukulkan in Mayan myth Prehistory to 4,113 years ago While the Anunnaki at Ein Gazal and Asikli Hayuk instructed the new species of Homo sapiens in the Neolithic technologies and arts, the Nazca lines were being arranged across the deserts of Peru. While the Nephilim giants walked the earth in Jericho and Catal Hayuk, the icons of South America were elongating their skulls. While the early empires of Egypt, Sumer, and the Veda flourished in Africa, the Middle East, and Southern Asia, the earliest temple construct was built at Tiwanaku as a shrine to a foreign god whom the indigenous tribes called Viracocha. Here we see his round decorative crown and shaved chin as Viracocha stands in a supplicant position outside the entrance to the Tiwanaku shrine. Compare this to the contemporary statue of Judea from Lagash, with his round, beaded crown, his beardless chin, and his hands clasped in supplication. Only one side of the gateway of Viracocha, standing behind his stele, beyond the entrance to Tiwanaku, is carved with decorative complex hieroglyphics. The top and center carved figure on the gateway of Viracocha represents the same god as the Stele's depiction, however is here shown wearing the mask of a feathered serpent. The feathered serpent motif came to symbolize the height of all the subsequent Mesoamerican civilizations to follow, from the Incans of Bolivia to the Toltecs of northern Mexico. It was juxtaposed to the specter of death, depicted as a skull that symbolized the waning counterpart to the rising feathered serpent. And, just as the longer-skulled Mayans replaced the rounder-skulled Olmecs, so too would the Toltec king Kukul Khan assume the ultimate throne of the feathered serpent over the mysterious Mayan pantheon of the Zibal Bay. Although at their height the Mayan and Aztec empires both possessed millions of colorful codices in their native hieroglyphic script, when the Jesuit conquistadors landed from 1492, they began a vicious campaign of burning all these historical and mythological records. All that yet remains are a small handful of codices in the Spanish translation of the oral traditional Popol Vuh the Mesoamerican equivalent of the Sumerian Book of Enki, or the modern Bible. The Popol Vuh describes the cosmology of the universe more concisely than the myth of Nibiru, Sumerian for the planet of the crossing. However, the characters of this Balbe, the Mayan pantheon of the crossroads, are essentially the same in number as their various Sumerian counterparts. The Popol Vuh describes the Zbalbe as living from prior to the end of the third cosmological epoch, the Jaguar Sun, when the animals were created. Following the end of that epoch, at the beginning of the Wind Sun, the Mud People were formed. At the end of the Wind Sun, there was an apocalypse, and all the Mud People were destroyed at the start of the Sun of Fire Rain and replaced by the wood monkeys. The wood monkeys were, in turn, destroyed in the apocalypse at the end of the fire rain sun by a flood marking the start of the water sun. This marked the creation of our modern incarnation, the corn people. Following this, the Popol Vuh describes the Olmec, dark jaguar, the Mayan, jaguar Kitze the Aztec Mixtec, Jaguar Knight, and the Toltec, called Not Right Now in the Popol Vuh, as the four great houses of the pre-Columbian Mesoamerican empires. 
the Zbalbe, or the Lords of the Underworld, lived during the epoch of the animals, called in the Popol Vuh the Jaguar Sun. Following the apocalypse that ended that epoch, the Zbalbe ascended and took on cosmic scale, representing South Hemisphere constellations and the local planets of the solar system. In this diagram of a circle divided into 12 sections and crossed in the middle by six horizontal and one vertical bars between the 12 divisions, we see the rulers of the Mayan pantheon compared with the epochs, or suns, of the Popol Vuh. Session 3C The Sumerian and Mayan Pantheons A Comparative Study Having now traced their impact on the earliest cultures to evolve there by examining and comparing their ruins and artifacts, we can now see both sides of the Atlantic Ocean's respective earliest pantheon's family trees, accent their contemporary development, compare and contrast their similarities and differences. In this section, we will be examining and comparing the mythological pantheons of two separate, and presumably until now, alien to one another, ancient cultures. We shall be seeing how they relate both in terms of the time they occur and the essential natures of the characters as well. From prehistory, the Sumerian Book of Enki recorded the reign of nine planets prior to the establishment of monarchy on Nibiru. The first and last kings of Nibiru are included as Antu and Anu. Then begin the reigns of those Nephilim half-breeds listed in the Babylonian king's list. They reign from the locations we today call India, Iraq, and Egypt over the earliest empires of the Fertile Crescent, beginning from some 16,000 years ago, according to the text. Contemporary to the reign of nine planets and the ten monarchs of Nibiru, Planet X, the Popol Vuh records the origin of the Twelve and Seven Zibalbe during the epoch of animals in the era of the Jaguar Sun. The complex Mayan calendar system of measuring these epochs by years establishes the Jaguar Sun of the animals began 20,492 years ago and ended around the same time as the Sumerian Book of Enki describes the Anunnaki as having descended to the lands of the Fertile Crescent. 13,366 years ago, the Jaguar Sun ended, and contemporary to the reign of the Nephilim half-breeds in Mesopotamia was the era of the Mud People under the Wind Sun, according to the Popol Vuh. Just as the earliest settlements of South America revolve around Nazca, Ica, and Tiwanaku, Peru, the Mud People were the early Incans of the Altiplano and pre-Machu Picchu, Bolivia. Then, between around 12,000 and exactly 10,240 years ago, a third apocalypse happened ending the reign of the half-breed Anunnaki Nephilim in the Levant and the mud people of the Wind Sun in South America. The Fire Rain Sun era of the Wood Monkeys is recorded in the Popol Vuh as beginning around the same time as the final seven generations of terrestrial Nephilim giants before the Deluge. At this time in South America, the Incan Empire reigned, and in Mesoamerica, the Olmec civilization began. In this era, we find the generations of Cain listed in the modern biblical book of Genesis and the construction of the Great Pyramids at Giza. Then, it is written, the flood swept over. During the rule of the four great houses, during the Water Sun Epoch, of the corn people in the Popol Vuh, the Maya, Aztec, 
Mixtec and Toltec empires reigned in Mesoamerica, while in the Levant, during that time, we find the seven times seven generations following Noah, as described in the books of the Bible from Exodus through the surahs of Quran. Around 2,000 years ago, scriptures stopped being added to the Latin Vulgate, upon which our modern Bible is based, and some 1,560 years later, the historical record of the Popol Vuh ends with the Spanish conquests. Next, we will look again at the circular diagram with seven inner bars. First, we see the twelve Anunnaki constellations, based on their names for the planets, including Nibiru, the Moon, and the Sun, divided in the middle by the seven Nephilim Anunnaki, descendants of Nibiru and King Anu, to reign on Earth before the Flood. Next, we see the Mayan equivalent of this same diagram, with the seven Zibalba Bay houses across the twelve Zibalba lords of the underworld. Now, in this third, similar-shaped diagram, we see both the Sumerian and Mayan names of the twelve and seven traits listed together. Also, the labels of which of the seven planets or twelve signs of the zodiac each character portrays are added. In this last diagram, we see listed all the historical names and traits attributed to the pantheon of twelve and crossbreeding of seven. From the beginning in the outermost circle, we list the twelve royal Anunnaki, followed next one in with the twelve Gnostic Archons, followed next in by the twelve tribes of Israel, next by the twelve apostles, and last by the twelve Zibalbe. The central bars are labeled with the names of seven terrestrial Anunnaki, seven Gnostic powers, seven terrestrial Nephilim, the seven original churches of Christianity, and the seven Zibalba Bay, houses of the damned. Combining the five attributes of twelve traits and the five attributes of seven traits with one more of each, we describe a full calendar round's worth of the dominions over the earth.